Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, amateur built flight testing criteria about to change. Also, NORAD IDs and tracks more Russian aircraft inside ADIS. And this is how you get access to Sun and Fawn Digital Daily. Happy Monday, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kane. We have a packed episode with the latest news, so let's go ahead and start with amateur built flight testing criteria about to change. EAA has reported that the FAA has published draft guidance to implement an optional task-based Phase 1 program for experimental amateur-built aircraft. Under the program, once an aircraft completes a flight test plan that meets FAA standards, Phase 1 is complete. The standard 25- or 40-hour flight test period for Phase 1 will remain an option for all EAB and experimental light sport continues to carry a 5-hour test period. The program is part of an upcoming update to Advisory Circular 9089B. Flight test programs do not need specific approval by the FAA, but the circular lays out certain required flight test points and requires the use of test cards for data collection in flight. Users of the EAA flight test manual should find it a straightforward way to complete the requirements of the task-based Phase 1 program. But anyone may draft a flight test plan that meets the FAA's outline, including kit manufacturers and other experts. Task-based Phase 1 ensures that every hour spent in flight testing is meaningful and contributing to both validating the airworthiness of the aircraft and gathering the data necessary to build a detailed operating manual. This will benefit the builder in ensuring full exploration of the aircraft's operating envelope and will benefit subsequent owners in having access to quality data on the aircraft. In exchange for this work, the aircraft will be released from Phase 1 when it's ready. After these messages, Textron Aviation celebrates a milestone. I'll tell you how many planes delivered after the break. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. In Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. So let's start with Textron Aviation celebrates 1,000 deliveries of the Citation 560 XL series. Textron is touting the 1,000th delivery of its 560 XL series midsize business jet with a delivery of the Cessna Citation XLS Plus to a customer based in the northeastern United States. The aircraft will be managed and operated by Custom Jet Charters, an FAA certified Part 135 operator based in Palm Beach International and Westchester County Airports, known for providing air charter services. So far, the global fleet of 560 XL aircraft has more than 5 million flight hours. Ericsson wins three U.S. Forest Service contracts for upcoming wildfire season. Ericsson has announced three new USFS firefighting contracts for the upcoming 2021 wildfire season. The USFS cooperates with CAL FIRE, U.S. Department of Interior, Bureau of Land Management, National Park Services, and Bureau of Indian Affairs for aerial firefighting contracts. 
Erickson has been working for the U.S. Forest Service on firefighting contracts since 1995 and is a global leader in aerial firefighting with current firefighting contracts in the United States, Canada, Australia, Greece, Italy, and South Korea. The North Carolina Board of Transportation has approved state and federal funding for safety and airfield improvement projects at 10 North Carolina airports. State funds totaling more than $12 million have been awarded for various projects that help the airports increase capacity, attract new jobs and businesses to their communities, and improve safety for pilots and passengers. The board approved the funds during its March 4th meeting. Embraer concludes aerial refueling qualification between two KC-390s. Embraer is claiming another important milestone in the development of the KC-390 Millennium Multi-Mission Military Freighter Program with the successful conclusion of the aerial refueling qualification between two KC-390 Millennium, proving for the Brazilian Air Force this operational capacity of the aircraft. The in-flight refueling capacity between two aircraft of the same model using in-flight refueling under wing pods is unique in this category. This allows KC-390 Millennium operators to expand their logistical transport capacity and during search and rescue operations. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. NORAD IDs and tracks more Russian aircraft inside ADIS. At 4.15 in the morning last Monday, the Alaskan North American Aerospace Defense Region, in support of NORAD, positively identified and tracked two TU-142 Russian Maritime Patrol aircraft entering the Alaskan Air Defense Identification Zone. The Russian aircraft, which are currently operating in international airspace, have not entered the United States or Canadian sovereign airspace. The Tupolev Tu-142 is a Soviet Russian maritime reconnaissance and anti-submarine warfare aircraft derived from the Tu-95 turboprop strategic bomber. The Tu-142 grew out of the need of a viable Soviet ASW platform. It succeeded the failed Tu-95 PLO project. Tupolev's first attempt at modifying the Tu-95 for maritime use. The Tu-142 deferred from the Tu-95 in having a stretched fuselage to accommodate specialized equipment for its ASW and surveillance roles, a reinforced undercarriage to support rough field capability, improved avionics and weapons, and enhancements to general performance. As always, NORAD remains vigilant and ready to protect the sovereign airspace of Canada and the United States to deter, deny, and defeat potential threats to our air and maritime approaches. Despite COVID-19, NORAD has taken deliberate measures and remains fully capable of conducting our aerospace warning, aerospace control, and maritime warning missions. After these messages, the first major aviation event of the year is just days away. What you need to know after the break. I believe that if people use the landing doctor training program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training and we do this with a crosswind, We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working and you're going to hear more about it. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable and economical with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com.
welcome back. The Era News Network and Sun and Fun have teamed up to add something timely, mobile-centric, and vital to the upcoming Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo, set for April 13th until the 18th in Lakeland, Florida, on the campus of the Aerospace Center for Excellence. We call it the Sun and Fun Digital Daily. This year's event is set to be the first major aviation gathering since the onset of the pandemic. The Digital Daily will be taking on the speedy and mobile capabilities of the best in online media to offer exciting daily news programming via a number of rich media assets in real time throughout each day of the long-awaited event. Designed to be the most accessible aviation news program, the Sun and Fun Digital Daily will be easily accessed by cell phone, tablet, or any other connected device, even the QR code shown here. We are excited to partner with ANN to bring this new feature to Sun and Fun, said John Lights Leanhouse, President and CEO. You can access the Sun and Fun Digital Daily starting very soon at the website you see on your screen. And please tell all your friends to check us out as we cover Sun and Fun 2021 from prop to tailco. Well, that does it for our show today. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media and feel free to comment with story ideas or just to say hi. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.